Well, brothers and sisters, today is going to go down in history since May 2nd. Because today is the day the Harper government undemocratically orders workers back to work. Shame! When they've been locked out. Shame! What the hell? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, my name's Kyle Buett. I'm the president of the Halifax Dartmouth and District Labor Council. And I want to bring you a message today of solidarity on behalf of the 25,000 unionized members of the Labor Council across the city. Brothers and sisters, this struggle has been long so far, and it's not over yet. In fact, once we go in today, and once we escort folks through those doors, the struggle begins anew on the shop floor. I think we can tell what's coming for the managers and supervisors and for the Harper government, can't we, folks? Now, uh, we've got a long list of speakers today. We've got some folks that want to bring you a message of solidarity and stand here with you in your struggle. But also, I, my understanding is that we're going to see some folks that are going to try and cross our picket line around 3.30, so we're going to be watching on the lookout for those folks. Anyway, without further ado, brothers and sisters, I'd like to call up your president, Trevor Be Trevor Beckerson, president of the Nova Local, to let you know what his thoughts are and where we're going today. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. So, brothers and sisters, I'm going to remind you a little bit of our timeline, just in case some of you don't know it, and because we must never forget some of this. We've been bargaining since October of 2008. At least, we, the postal workers, have been bargaining. Canada Post, not so much. Our demands were pretty simple. We wanted improvements to health and safety. We wanted to change the collective agreement language to improve rotation of duties. We wanted mandatory ergonomic studies when they introduced new machines and new methodology. We wanted to improve staffing provisions so there would be more rotation of duty and less forced overtime. We wanted to review services to improve door-to-door -door delivery, to increase the services that happen at retail counters. There are many places in this country, brothers and sisters, where Canada Post is the only presence of any government at all, and there are many, many things we can be doing for the public. Of course, brothers and sisters, the employer had their demands too. Boo! Uh, don't boo them until you hear them. <laughs> they wanted two tier wages and pensions. They initially wanted new workers to make $7 an hour or less for doing the exact same work. They tried to sweeten it up by putting it to $5 an hour or less. That's their idea of negotiating. They, of course, want new workers to work an extra five years before they can get a pension. Shame! They want to take away one week of vacation. Shame! They want to reduce the staffing provisions so that they can have more temp workers and more forced overtime. Shame! Shame! Benefits for all! Benefits for all! Benefits for all! Benefits, let's not forget the sick plan. Thank you. We don't want your STD. 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 The employer sick plan is simple. Sick. If the employer says you're not sick, you're not sick. They're always able to overrule your doctor, and you simply don't get paid if they don't agree. Shame. There's no union involvement and no grievance procedure. Shame. You have to appeal to them, likely to the same person who turned you down in the first place. Shame. And of course, using employment insurance benefits is an integral part of their plan, meaning that they expect the taxpayer to subsidize our sick time. Shame. 
This is a company that made $218 million in 2009, expecting the taxpayer to subsidize our sick leave. So as you can see, we didn't have much to agree on. So bar bargaining effectively went nowhere, because the employer, from the beginning, refused to make any real, real, substantive effort. So we applied for conciliation in January of 2011. And we went through conciliation and mediation with the same results. So, having no other choice, on May 30th, the CUPW issued their 72-hour notice of strike. The employer, of course, responded by declaring the collective agreement null and void. They reduced hours for part-timers. And, of course, they stopped calling temp workers. No medical plan. Shame on them. Getting to it. Shame on them. This, of course, left... took away our sick leave, our vacation, and our benefit plan. This is a despicable maneuver on the employer's part. This is to punish workers for standing up for their rights. No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! No justice, no peace! But it's not all bad. The employer came back later and said they'd reinstate the drug plan if you were willing to pay $100 for every prescription. That's dope. So on June 2nd, we had enough, and Winnipeg walked off the job. Winnipeg was the first of many rotating strikes, both locals large and small. Montreal with nearly 7,000 workers, and Salmon Arm, BC, Carboneer, Newfoundland, and Sioux Lookout, Ontario with 23 workers in between them. And no one can say we didn't try. On June the 9th, the CUPW offered to suspend the rotating strikes if the employer reinstated our collective agreement while we negotiated. The employer said no, and they told us that they were going to resort to three-day-a-week mail delivery. On June the 14th, the first set of letter carriers were locked out. It didn't quite go as the employer planned. Because about 20,000 letter carriers across the country put on their uniforms, came to work anyway, and said, we are ready to work. I'm never going to get this speech done with all the shouting. <laughs> We're back at you, driver. The employer, of course, said no, so we immediately got the picket signs out. The picket sign said, locked out. Locked out! Locked out. So it didn't go as well as the employer wanted, so on June 15th, just after midnight, they gathered up the workers and said, you're locked out. Go home. Our picket lines went up immediately, and I'm proud to say they've stayed up ever since. This is our employer, brothers and sisters. This is Canada Post. This is how they think of you. This is the respect they have for you. No Lack of what respect? No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. No peace. No peace. No peace. And brothers and sisters, today, tomorrow, for the next four years while we suffer through this unfair contract. Down with Herber! Down with Herber! Down with Herber! Never let the employer forget that we know how they think of us. And let's not forget the federal government, who immediately rushed to defend Canada Post and introduce back to work legislation. This is a time where I need to thank our brothers and sisters in the NDP. Yes. They stood up for workers, they stood up for postal workers, and they defended the rights and working dignity of all workers.
I want to recognize members of parliament, Peter Stauffer and Robert Chisholm right here today with us. The postal workers are at your debt. The Conservative government claimed by turns that this service was too essential to leave locked out. On other times they said that we're an antiquated dinosaur and there's no need for us anyway. Seems they can't get their story straight. Nothing new there, I'm afraid. They, of course, also claim that we have no support from the public. Other than that guy, I guess. We know different. We are a public service. We are a public service. We are a public service. Brothers and sisters, we are a public service. In fact, we are the oldest public service in Canada. We were created immediately after Confederation in 1867, but we've been carrying mail since 1775. The work we do, brothers and sisters, represents this country more than any politician ever will. No offense. <laughs> we are an integral part of every community. The work we do, brothers and sisters, is important, and it is dignified, and it must be protected. In fact, we value our service to the public so much that on June the 20th, we sent thousands of postal workers back onto the work floor at the request of the CUPW to deliver government assistance checks. We do this, brothers and sisters, not for the CUPW, not for Canada Post. We do it for the public because we know that there are people who need those checks to survive. And we know that because they need this money, we see no reason why they should suffer because Canada Post wants us to suffer. The CUPW wants to provide better services. We want to expand our role in society. We want to turn the post office into the face of the Canadian people. The employer wants job cuts, service reductions, and an oppressive workplace. We're not just fighting here today, brothers and sisters, to protect our sick leave and our pension. We're fighting to protect our public service and a key aspect of Canadian culture. And the fight is not over today. We've already told the employer, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. No peace. When you get back to work today, brothers and sisters, remember, remember the supervisors that we saw clearing the street boxes while we were locked out. Remember the ones that we could see in the window sorting our mail. I don't care how nice they are to your face or how pleasant they act. Their job is to oppress you and take your job from you. Remember it and make sure they remember it for every day from now on. Must be the same guy going back and forth because no one supports us apparently. And today, we're telling the government, you're next. This legislation is an affront to all working Canadians. And through our union allies, some of you are here today and it's good to see you here. Through our community supporters, I'm proud to see you here. Through our Canadian Labour Congress, our federations of labour and our labour councils, we will make sure that this never happens again to another workplace. We will never again have a government that puts profit and employers before workers and the citizens they were elected to serve. I'm hoping that our representative of the Canadian Labour Congress heard that. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, the, the postal workers are angry, the unions are angry, and the employer and the government will learn just how powerful we are together. Thank you very much.